Today on Retro Projects we're going to be looking at LED matrix display. Now the LED matrix display was a project that a colleague Julian Eilis and I designed and built in the early 90s and it consisted of the main display PCB made out of 448 5mm red LEDs which were the cheapest at the time and these were arranged in 64 columns and 7 rows. Now this project was made long before the advent of microcontrollers so the chips at the time were the famous Z80A CPU running at 4 MHz, a 32K EEPROM which stored the program and the library messages and a 64K static RAM which stored all the messages that you would key in. There was a 20-way ribbon cable which connected to the main display, uh, a 12 volt input there which was regulated down to 5 volts on this particular board uh, and a 10-way connector to connect the 5 finger keypad to the main display uh, a 4 pin dip there for changing the mode with which the display would boot up and a reset switch at the top there. The other components were just the 10 way ribbon cable that connected the 5 finger keypad to the main display and the keypad itself. Now one of the ways of getting messages into the matrix display was using this curious five finger keypad. You would learn codes which represented the characters and because there was five buttons you could get 32 combinations which was just convenient for the 26 alpha a space and four function codes which allowed you to do other things. This was connected to the CPU PCB at the top there. If you didn't want to use the five finger keypad and learn all the codes, there was another option. You could use the same 10 way ribbon cable and connect it to an extra project which was a PC interface. And this used a good old fashioned parallel connector and you could connect that to your PC and then use the PC's QWERTY keyboard to input your messages more quickly. This also enabled you to download lots of library messages as well that you could have pre-prepared. OK, so let's turn the unit on and key in a simple message. So we're in the general library, one of four, and the message is H, E, L, another L, O, and a special character 2, 3 and 5, which is the display character. Now Julian and I made up this rather posh technical manual for the matrix display, so let's have a look inside. First of all, there's this table of how to form the characters for the five finger keypad. So if you look at the keypad allocation table, for instance the letter P requires all five buttons to be pushed. Space is just the thumb of the right hand or the leftmost button. To clear the display is the centre three buttons and as already described to display your message would be the second, third and fifth buttons. Now the display only coped with capital characters so you had A to Z, then space and the four function commands clear, display, search and shift and if you did shift that would open up another 31 possible characters, the numbers, a few special characters and then some picture characters as well as further function keys. And on the next page you have the two complete character sets with all the picture characters. Boats and arrows and clocks and phones and houses and some just sort of patterns. And we had to dream up four A to Z lists of messages which were the library messages for each of the four modes that the matrix display could boot up in. General messages, retail messages, entertainment messages and warning messages. So K in warnings was keep out. At the back were some rather lovely component layout diagrams of the main PCB, the CPU PCB and the five finger keypad. 
So what about these library messages then? Well, they use the search command, which was keys 1, 2, 3 and 5, and any letter. So say, for instance, you did G, search, you get an exit sign with arrows pointing down. Y search would give you a similar sign with an arrow pointing to the left. And how about X search? That shows some hearts which scroll up and then wipe away to the right. So you get the idea of the library messages. Now the way a message appeared and disappeared from the display could be changed by keying in a control word of up to six characters. So the first character of the control word decided how the message would appear. So there was an instant or a wipe or various scrolls. And the same with the second character of the control word, same options. The third character of the control word decided the gap in between the uh, appearing and disappearing of the message, whether it was uh, held for a long time or none at all. The fourth character decided whether the message was a one-off or continuously displayed. The fifth character was just selecting the fonts. And incidentally, the font wides just read out the data twice. So they were just stretched by a factor of 100%. And then the sixth character was whether words in a long message would be broken up into individual words and displayed or whether the whole message would just scroll through. The best way to illustrate this is using the car character. So let's get the car character up by using Shift W. So it's Shift W and then display. So there's the car symbol that appears and disappears instantly. So let's change the attributes and get it to scroll in from the right and scroll out to the left. Now the parameters for that are E and E, so let's change those, E, E, Shift, Display, and notice that the display is unaffected at the time being. We need to key in the car character again, so we'll do that now. Shift, W, Display, and now the car scrolls in from the right and out to the left. And if we take the hold time out, we can get it to scroll continuously. Here are some more examples of messages. So there it is, some of the features of the LED matrix display.